Chargers. They've got a bye. Their schedule sets up a little bit for them to go on a winning streak. They're one in four, but I wouldn't want to see them on my schedule if I was anybody else. This is tough. It always is. You know, everything we want is still in front of us. I know that if we keep working hard and doing the right things, good things will happen. Hold on! Yes, sir! This kid is not backing down to anybody. Touchdown! And don't take anything away from the Chargers either. It's a very good defense. I'm just telling God just to believe. Back on the end of the Let's go, man! Welcome to Chargers HQ, powered by Toyota. I'm your host, Haley Elwood. The Bolts are back from their bye this week and are gearing up for Week 7's game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. We're here to get you ready for that, so to start things off, let's take a look at rookie QB Justin Herbert's performance in Week 5 against the Saints, and also look ahead to a Jags player we'll see tomorrow in Film Room, powered by YouTube TV. Herbert, shotgun pass, looking for Mike Williams, throwing for Mike Williams, left sideline, up, caught! Mike Williams with the catch inbounds, left sideline to the 31. What a grab by Mike Williams. What's up guys, welcome to a week seven edition of Film Room presented by YouTube TV. Here with Daniel Jeremiah. And DJ, what can you say about the rookie Justin Herbert? All he's missing is a win, which hopefully he'll get on Sunday. Yeah, look, everything's been impressive except for the final score, but he's done everything in his power to keep the Chargers in these football games that he's been starting. And you're seeing really growth every single week, Chris. I want to show you a couple of plays here to get you fired up based off the Saints game. Uh, this first one is down here in the red zone. You're going to have a seven-man pressure. You can count them up here at the line of scrimmage. you got seven rushers. Uh, you've only got six blockers, so you're going to be hot. Now, the hot route is going to be down here on the bottom. You're going to see Justin Jackson is the running back is split out running a slant. Now, if he throws this ball here, uh, it's going to be caught and tackled right there at about the 15-yard line. But he sees it, and he realizes, I'm Justin Herbert. I can buy a little time. I'm athletic. I'm just going to beat this free rusher with my legs, buy some time, and then throw this off-balance strike for a touchdown to Keenan Allen. So, uh, to me, there's very few people that are capable of being able to bypass the hot route, as you see it right here from the end zone, be able to generate enough time to find your way into the end zone. It's an incredible play by Justin Herbert. I was just going to say, DJ, it's one thing. I think a handful of quarterbacks can do this, but a rookie doing this in the Superdome on Monday Night Football, that, that's next level. Yeah, and he's just getting started, and that's what's so exciting about him is that he, he, he finds opportunities and he, he's able to cash it in. I want to give you another example here of where you have a, a busted coverage. This is Mike Williams who motions up to the top of the screen. This should be a two-high safety look. You look at the safety down here on the bottom. He's playing in a two-shell. Look at the safety up at the top. He should be playing in that deep half. The corner is going to be squatting right there. He assumes he's got safety help over the top, and his eyes are in the backfield. Well, the safety's squatting, and Herbert, he sees it immediately. And when you make a mistake like that in coverage, you've got to be able to make them pay, and that's exactly what Justin Herbert did right here. And, DJ, this is the first game where we really saw Mike Williams and Justin Herbert connect. This could be a fun connection for the next five to seven years. Yeah, I just want to see Mike stay healthy. When Mike stays healthy, all he does is make plays down the field and it gets you really excited. Um, but I showed you an example of a safety making a mistake there and cashing in. I want to show you one more here, Chris. Uh, watch the safety at the top. You see the safety at the top. He's going to get to about the 35-yard line. Herbert gets to the top of his drop. Now watch this safety settle right here. Once he sees him settle, I know I've got it if I'm mm -hmm. Justin Herbert. And at the top of his drop, watch him uncork this one to Jalen Guyton for a huge play, probably should have kept his feet, would have been a touchdown. But again, being able to see coverage, identify safeties, and when they level off, man, you got to strike and make them pay. All right, we got one more here from Herbert on YouTube TV. But, you know, just the fact that Guyton, this is a guy who they work together at training camp. That chemistry is already on display. It's pretty cool to see. It's fun to watch these new weapons kind of develop. And we, we wondered who that player was going to be this year. You know what you're going to get with Keenan Allen. You know what you're going to get with Mike Williams. Who is going to step up to complement those guys? And Jalen Guyton has done that thus far with his speed and big playability down the field. I want to show you one last play here from Herbert. This should have been the game-winning play. Uh, led to a field goal opportunity. Unfortunately, the Chargers didn't cash in. But there's 15 seconds left. 
you see Mike Williams down here at the bottom of the screen. And they're going to show, they're going to try and disguise coverage with single high look here. So they're trying to trick him into taking this ball with Mike Williams. They're going to try and run a defender out to try and catch up to him here. Look at him trying to catch up from being down low. But Herbert knows there's no chance he's got to get there. I'm going to put this up in the air and I'm going to let Mike Williams do what he does, which is just mm. play above the rim, go high point the ball, make an incredible catch, ironically, in front of the word catch and put them at the 30 yard line with a chance to, to win the football game with a kick. But uh, that was, again, identifying coverage, being aggressive, and taking your shot down the field. DJ, honest question. What was better, the throw or the catch? <laughs> well, the, the, the throw was the right read. It was a great throw. And as much as we've uh, been giving Herbert a lot of praise, I think when you slow this down, we might need to give the nod to Mike here. Look at him go up and get this football. Right, we'll, we'll, give Mike the, we'll give Mike the nod on that one. And speaking of wide receivers, as you flip it over to Jacksonville, LaVisca Chanel, DJ, this was a guy that you really liked coming out of Colorado, had some injuries, but man, he's a player. Yeah, if he's not injured in his last year at Colorado, he's probably a top 15 pick. I mean, that was the consensus on him coming into his final year at Colorado. And it looks like the Jags got an absolute steal where they were able to land him in this draft class. And he's doing a lot of his damage Chris, working in the middle of the field, and it's because of what he does at the top of his route. And I want to show you a couple examples. Down here in the red zone, you see him on the bottom of the screen here. Watch him work in the middle of the field. Watch him settle right here. This is a route you'll see a lot in the red zone. Once he settles, you want the defender to settle. Watch the defender mirror him once he settles. His feet stop, and then LaVisca Chanel is just able to start mm -hmm. a lot quicker. So you get that in the red zone. It's a nice, easy read, easy throw for your quarterback and Gardner Menchu, and then he just wins the foot race to the end zone. But that's that's kind of what he's been doing throughout the whole year is working in the middle of the field and doing an excellent job at the top of his route. Give you another example. He's at the top of the screen right here. Watch this corner. Watch him stem this corner up, what we like to call it. I'm going to slow it down. Watch him stem him up. See him get him on his heels. And once he's on his heels, look at the amount of separation he creates on that crosser. Just that little subtlety at the top of the route, Chris. You talked about his competitiveness and his toughness coming out of Colorado. Also, you had a comp last year. I looked it up. A combination of Juju Smith-Schuster and Mike Williams. I like that combo, DJ. Yeah, and we've seen just the toughness and the physicality of those guys. And I'll give you a final example here of him working in the middle of the field. This is going to be a third down here. Uh, this is third and four. So LaVisca Chenault's in the slot down here in the bottom. He's just going to spot up right over the ball, okay? So there he is. He's at the sticks. You see where the sticks are. The ball's getting ready to come out of Gardner Minshew's hand. You think, okay, great job. He's going to get the first down. It's going to be a five-yard gain. There's four Colt defenders around him right there. So that's a win, right? Five-yard gain. And then you let the play roll. And as you let it roll, watch what he does with it. Just ping pong off a tackle and look at the yards he generates after the catch. You can see it even better here from the end zone. This is a linebacker that's going to hit him full force and it just it doesn't even phase him. He's so big and strong. Just bounce right off and go get you some more after the catch. So that toughness, that physicality, that ability to work in the middle of the field, you better bring your arms. You better wrap up LaVisca Chenault. Coming up, we find out more about the Jack Boys. We honor a local hometown hero. And later, Denzel Perryman answers all of your burning questions. This segment of Chargers HQ was powered by Pacific Premier Bank. Welcome back to Chargers HQ. Have you ever wanted to ask a member of the Jack Boys a question? Well, how about three of them? Some lucky fans got to do just that when they got to ask Derwin James, Casey Hayward, and Nasir Adderley pretty much anything and everything on their minds. What did those guys have to say? Well, let's find out in the first installment of Dear Jack Boys, powered by Pepsi. Jack Boys, my name is Megan. My uncle is Gus Bradley. <laughs> my question for you is, what is your favorite Gus Bradley saying? <laughs> the favorite saying right now is football, tips and overthrows. How they get, get those. You <laughs> said run, run. Reach. <laughs> yeah, that was his favorite saying. He gonna say them all the time. Show up strong, baby. What's going on? It's your boy Nas here. It is picked off, Nasir Adderley. Welcome to the Jack Boy Series. I got show with me. Terrific defensive play, Casey Hayward. I got DJ. Yo. Sir. Yeah, buddy! We excited to see what the fans got to ask us. I mean, we looking forward to speaking with you all. Yo, what up, Jack Boys? ASAP. 
Uh, it's your boy Ryan calling from Anchorage, Alaska. I just wanted to call and see what you guys play music-wise before you go in the field. About to hit someone in the mouth, get some interceptions, spot some passes down. What do you guys play to get the most hype before you guys go out and do business? ASAP. Derwin James, baby. For myself, I'm going to play a little Young Jeezy before the game. And then if I, you know, I might play a little Raw Wave and Lucci. And I already know what Nas going to say. <laughs> he he going to say Meek Mill. You already know what it is. Now, being from Philly, of course, I got the Meek on, Core. I mean, those are the main two. Now, this is a little baby here and there, too. Uh, for me, I'm going Young Boy, Lil Baby, and Raw Wave. Hey, man, dear Jack boys, I'm out here, man, in Columbus, Ohio. Been a big Chargers fan since a youngin', you feel me? But I got a real question for y'all today, though. Which one of y'all Jack boys is the best on the sticks? We talking Madden, 2K, Call of Duty, Fortnite, whatever it is, man. Who the best? Hello, the person that's playing the sticks. Huh? <laughs> Mines. Oh my God, that's user alert. That ain't a computer. That's all me. Oh, he exited. <laughs> he turned the game off. <laughs> I got mine on deck too. <laughs> hey, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go Derwin, NBA. I mean, yeah, 2K I got, I got and Matt and NBA and 2K, uh, Derwin. I don't know if you play Call of Duty or nothing, though. He ain't seen me yet, but I know he, I'm saying, making big time uh, stuff happening in Madden. So once I get the PlayStation, we going to see. Do you judge boys? First of all, love you guys. And I'm your biggest fan in Mexico City. And for the question, who is the most hyped up player before a game? I gotta say Ray or something. Ah! During the game, Ray, for sure. I told you! I told you! I told you! I told you! <laughs> During the game, Ray. Before the game, you might get like uh, JJ. I'm gonna call JJ the D the D tackle. <laughs> then you got DP. DP be pretty hype as well. So Denzel. Jack Boys, man, what it do? Uh. <laughs> OSHS. Who the hardest hitter on the team? Oh man. The hardest hitter on the team gotta be DP. <laughs> DP, definitely. DP, the hardest hitter. Without a doubt. <laughs> He hurt. He hurt. I ain't gonna say it on air, but he got a different kind of script. For real. He got a different script for real. Yeah, I think that's he probably, he probably He probably the hardest hitter and probably our best tackle. That boy got Superman powers. Hey, let's take a quick break and let's hear from our sponsors. I know you can't come to the games, but while you're at home, enjoy a Pepsi. It goes great with football. If I wasn't playing football, I'd be drinking Pepsi. What's up, Jack boys? Got a question for you. If you were to go to Hawaii for one day, who would you go with on the Chargers? Shoot, Hawaii, love me. Shoot, I'll go with all the Jack boys, though. Yeah, I, uh, I can't pick one person. Maui. Man, we're bringing the whole game, man. Yeah, we'll pick Hawaii. So what the Bahamas. Bahamas, uh, Turks and Caicos. See, you got money, though. <laughs> I'm trying to get oh, like man. you. You just gotta save up a little bit. You be straight. <laughs> Once again, we appreciate y'all submitting the questions for this week, Jack Boy series. Y'all keep submitting the questions and we're gonna keep answering them. Vote up. When we return on Chargers HQ, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and we highlight a local physician making a difference in our community. This segment of Chargers HQ was powered by Toyota. Welcome back to Chargers HQ. This Sunday is the Chargers' crucial catch game, which supports the NFL's initiative in the fight against cancer. The Chargers are also celebrating a local physician who specializes in breast cancer care and is doing her part to support women's health during these unprecedented times. This is Hometown Hero, powered by Grant Thornton. My name is Dr. January Lopez. I'm a physician. My specialty is radiology, and my expertise is in breast cancer care. Day-to-day -day life at uh, this time is uh, particularly challenging and um, has been really dynamic for us, I think, um, in the setting of this COVID pandemic. 
just last month, I saw a woman who had delayed her mammogram. Um, she was actually um, symptomatic, feeling changes, seeing changes and feeling changes in the breast. Um, turns out when she, we finally got it, were able to see her, she had a very advanced breast cancer that just, you know, a year and a half ago, her mammogram was completely stone cold normal. Even though COVID is going on around us, we do have to find a new normal and please do take care of yourself. I know I am doing what I'm doing because God put me on this earth to do this. Um, this is why I am here to take care of people, to take care of patients who have breast cancer and to try and prevent women from dying from breast cancer. But when I heard I was you know, being honored with this nomination, it was so meaningful. Being recognized for um, all the work that I do, it, is, it, it means the world to me and, and I will remember this for the rest of my life. On Sunday, don't forget to tune in to CBS at 1.25 p.m. Pacific for Jaguars vs. Chargers presented by Hogue. Hogue Family Cancer Institute is Orange County's leader in the fight against cancer, treating over 18,000 patients annually between two state-of-the-art cancer centers. Ranked in the top 10% in the nation, at Orange County's highest ranked hospital, cancer breakthroughs start at Hogue. Through novel cancer treatments, some of which are first in the world, Hogue cancer patients continually exceed national survival rates. Visit www.hogue.org slash conquer to learn more. Welcome back to Chargers HQ. If you were to ask Chargers players who the biggest personality on the team is, chances are Denzel Perryman's name would come up quite a lot. Here's number 52's thoughts on refrigerating hot sauce, if a hot dog is a sandwich, and more in questions from a helmet. I don't know what this is, to be honest with you. But uh, if you notice your question, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce what it is. Do you refrigerate hot sauce or leave it on the counter? I leave it on the counter. I've never been a, a big fan of putting hot sauce in the refrigerator. I know some people that do it, I don't know why they do it, but I mean, you go to a restaurant and ask for hot sauce, they don't never come out of the refrigerator. Best song of 2020? I would say personally. I mean, it ain't a new song, but my song for 2020 is uh, Lil Duval, uh, Living My Best Life, Smile. Canada on strike. Canada on strike. All right, you're on a road trip and stop for gas. What snack are you getting? Uh, this is actually a good question. If I'm being stopped, honestly, whatever I see and like in the store, so I might come out with Twizzlers, Starburst, a couple water bottles, some Gatorades, uh, some Slim Jim, some beef jerky, some gum. If it's like one of those places that uh, have like a little quick stop where I can make a sandwich, I get a sandwich, uh, some cookies. That's probably about it. <laughs> Who's the toughest on the team? Uh, Daniel Allison won. Uh, myself. All right, is a hot dog a sandwich? Yeah, it's a meat and bread to me, so. That's what it can say on sister, uh, you know, piece of bread. And then technically, if you split that bun in half, you got your two slices. I'm out of here. This segment of Chargers HQ was powered by Pacific Premier Bank. No game day is complete without drinks, right? Well, good news, because we've teamed up with Precious Vodka this season to create custom Chargers cocktails for every home game, and here's one you can try tomorrow. Hi, I'm Justin. I'm the mixologist here at Spring Place, and today I'm gonna show you how to make the bolts up featuring Precious Vodka. Step one, line the rim with cotton candy to give it that bolt up energy. Step two, two ounces of precious vodka. Step three, one ounce of turmeric simple syrup. Step four, one and a half ounces of lemon juice. Step five, shake and strain into a Collins glass with ice. Last step, pour it and enjoy. That'll do it for this week's Chargers HQ, powered by Toyota. We'll be back next week to preview the Chargers Week 8 game against the Denver Broncos in the Mile High City. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Haley Elwood. Good night.